He is? All right. What up, Josh C? <laughs> really? Vintage lots. Look at you guys. The card market. I was talking to Keenan today. Who am I kidding? I'm talking to somebody every day about cards, but it's the market right now. There's just so much stuff happening in it. You can just feel the feel the power, so to speak. It's I mean, I knew it was gonna be sustaining when I started this years ago, but I didn't have any idea to this level of demand. And yes, the lockdowns and stuff, the stay-at-home orders, the job losses, the layoffs had a big part of it. But it was doing really good prior to the pandemic. Well, it's just a big wave. It started out with, and I can't think of the examples now, but certain players or a certain product, and then and then it goes from there. Everyone's like, oh, it's getting too expensive. There, let's find something else to make awesome, and then that becomes popular, and then that becomes popular, and now it's this, now it's that. It's just like every night. Collectibles in general. Let's just say that. I want to know right now everybody's thought in a sentence or two. What do you all think of the HGA grading? What do you think their future holds or doesn't hold? What are you thinking of the HGA? Adley for the Orioles, I believe. Well, I mean, I haven't done too much research and due diligence on my own part. I've just been seeing comments and forums and message boards and stuff, Twitter. So I can't really make a fair assessment. I would just be mirroring what I'm seeing on the internets. I see mixed. I see mixed on the internet. internets. I see that they're going to be awesome because PSA is overpriced and takes a year. And they love the look and the design of it. And I also see in here and talk to people that say uh, their grading sucks. They've seen grades with their corners tattered up and bent getting nine fives and stuff. That ain't good. They got it. Can't be putting nine fives on stuff if the card's tattered. Bent corners. It's the O's. 
We go down the ocean, hon. <laughs> the O's. It really is a charm city for those of you who've never been to Baltimore. Those people are extremely charming, I'll tell you that. We should be coming up on our autograph. Coming up. Coming up. Coming up. There, thank God. It is Ian Seymour, number to 499. Cool thing about Ian, 57th overall, and he is a Tampa Ray. I pulled a Keller today. You guys want to hear a quick story? So my sister lives in uh, St. Pete area. So she went and took a round where our house is for our for spring break where we're staying. The vacation rental. And she's like, I don't think you'll like it. There's a big eyesore ditch right down the middle in your front yard. And the houses around it don't look too good. Your house is awesome, but I don't know. I'm like, well, I'll take your word for it. I believe you. I, don't, I need to hear no more. I told Heather, I called the vacation people and I canceled it. I said, you know what? We got to cancel it. Keep our credit on file from COVID and we'll use it another time this summer. Heather calls me back, says, you do realize that there's zero other places in St. Pete area for spring break. Everything is booked. So I had to call the company back. And thank God the place hasn't been taken yet. And I was able to rebook that house. So I almost ruined our family spring break good times well I know that I know that um, that rings true no one's gonna unseat the reigning kings but they're gonna be losing market share you know they're still it's like WWE AEW is not going to take out WWE they're just not AEW can take out maybe Ring of Honor or some of these smaller guys but they're not taking out the WWE PSA is not going away but HGA can really really become a player in the industry and make a lot of money for themselves being a smaller company that's good Zach Veen ninth overall Colorado Rockies. That's for you, Dave. I think Zach Veen is good. I'm not sure, but I think that's a good auto. Star stock. I mean, you got stuff like that NBA video, NBA top shot, which I was told by an insider, a business insider, not actually a hobby insider, that they're going to be doing that for all sports. There's going to be NFL Top shot. It'll be called who knows what. End zone or something. End zone highlights. They're all going to have it. NHL, MLB, NFL. See? Zach Bean is very good, Dave. Dylan Dingler. We had a Dylan Dingler auto last week. Owen Miller. Shiny Dingler. Yeah, they have. They, they got people's attention. The only thing I worry about HGA is if, if their cards are going to be sharp in a 10. Like, you can look at the card. People are going to get it back. And, you know, they'll be happy because they got like a 9.5. I haven't seen 10s. But then again, I'm not really looking. There's a Curse Jad. That's who you're thinking of, Martin. Maybe Curse Jad, not uh, the other guy for the A's. Oh, my God. Yeah, UFC is going to have a field day with that.
<laughs> a shiny dingler. Everybody needs a shiny dingler. Or a purple Bobby. Too fitty. Danny Mendick. Love Danny Mendick. Do you guys like Mendick? Oh, here we go again with the Mendick. Does anybody collect Mendick? I mean, the thing is, if they do a blockchain of Danny Mendick, it'll just be a picture of Mendick. You know? Like, who wants a picture of Mendick? I'd rather hold the card. I don't even know if Mendick has a blockchain. I don't think he's... I don't think he's big enough to warrant a blockchain of Mendick. Well, somebody's going to gamify all this. I know that for a personal. I I know that that it's being worked on as I open these cards. I mean, Loop has kind of gamified things, but they're just given a platform for people to do their breaks on, right? They're sharing in the revenue and the sales. But someone's going to take it further and it's going to be a one-stop shop. You get your breaks done. If you want to sell the cards, you put it up on the marketplace. It sells instantly. Crazy stuff. There's our boy, Justin Foskew, number to 150. Yeah, the marketplace is where the revenue is. There's some really, really, really big players looking at this group breaking industry. I can tell you that. Two fifty. And I want to be first in line for the opportunity. But I ain't selling off my company or portions of it. That's the problem. It's very difficult to get a breaker to give up their business and their customer base. I don't want to give up my customer base. I think Foskew is dope, isn't he? Somebody's going to take this breaking stuff and gamify it. And it'll be similar to the interface like how you go to the Daily Fantasy Sports websites and you can just click and drag and move stuff around. It'll be like that. To buy your spots, to trade your team. You want to trade your teams? You just click over here, drag it. The other person agrees. Boom. The trade is done. You just hold the card up like this. A computer will take a picture of the card and automatically upload it. All the hits up to a site that instantly posts all the hits. And you'll see it. You'll be like, I want to sell that. I just got this Justin Foskew auto. So the breaker holds the card up. The hits like I do, like we all do. Computer picks up on it, scans it. It goes up. The person who hit that card says, sell it instantly. They sell it. Money goes into their PayPal. Good stuff. Can't wait for it. It will be physical cards.
physical cards, in my opinion, are going to be around forever. It's there's too much of a camaraderie camaraderie element with the physical cards at the shows. I mean, they fill up basically arenas, you know, show floors with big shows across the country and regionally. I know the one here twice a year prior prior to COVID was huge. They bring in a lot of signers. Four ninety nine, Chris McMahon. 46th. Anything can have value. It doesn't matter if it's a card or not, though. That's the thing. If people say that it's valuable, then it is. It's like PSA. If they say it's a 10, it's a 10. If the consumers are saying these moment and these video things are have value, well, then they do. Like, you can't stop that. It depends what the consumers say has value or not. Consumer says this card has value. 50 bucks. Okay. Well, the consumers are saying Top Shot has value. Even though it's weird and I don't get it. Picked it up at the auto. How do I always do that? There's a torque. I know that, Sean, but they're not stupid. I would have to sign a non-compete agreement that I would not do that. I know that, Sean. Top shelf breaks. For any of us that do this, their company is pretty much the breaker, the person that owns it. That's what that's what the company is. That's what somebody would be buying. And trust me, I've talked to people that have shown interest, but I don't want to give that up. I love the creativity. I love the freedom. It's very, very difficult to build something like this. If you're all about money... That's one thing. Some people are about the money. They're like, I'm doing it. I'm going to sell it, take my money, and I'm out. I love what I do too much. And I really don't really want to work for somebody else either. Now, if you're talking life-changing money, stuff that begins with M's, that's a little different. Number to 150. So, I'm kind of just waiting to see what some of these proposals and deals may look like. Because it, it would be nice to have real help. You know, I do all this myself pretty much with Tommy and Josh, a couple other helpers and the guys at, at home. But you get somebody that builds infrastructure and has multi, multi, multi millions that can run your back office, your shipping, everything. That makes a diff. Yeah, they're going to say, Chris, we did a deep dive on your business, your sales, your allocations. The allocations is where the money's at, in addition to your sales, <laughs> to you guys. So there's people who pay big money just to get my allocations from all of my sources. Um, but then what would I do? I don't want to be an employee for my own company. Boo! Boo! 